Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video today and welcome to my channel. My name is Chris. We talk all about ponds, waterfalls, water gardens, aquatic plants, fish, pond filtration, and the whole bit here. So thank you for uh, checking out the video. Um, if you're really interested in all this stuff, you're looking to build a pond for yourself, or you already have a pond and want some information about something, um, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Take your time, look around. I have a ton of stuff here for you. I've been in business for over 25 years building these uh, ponds professionally, and I've done this channel basically to help share with you a lot of the things that I've learned over the years, give you some helpful tips, some tricks, some information, suggestions, the whole bit. So thank you very much again for um, checking out the video today. Um, so we are going to be talking about whether or not you should have your pond in a sunny location or in a shady location. We'll talk a little bit about the benefits and disadvantages of each. So just to kind of give you, you know, a, a picture of what you can expect if your pond's in the sun and what you can expect if your pond's in the shade. So basically let me just cut right to the chase and tell you the ideal situation would be a pond that gets at least half two-thirds of a day of sun and you know a third or half a day of shade okay of some sort. Um, <laughs> why? All right well having your pond out in the sun first and foremost is going to make the pond um, a little warmer okay in the summer um, it's going to produce or, or what's the word I'm looking for um, it's going to encourage that's the word more algae growth okay so algae is a plant so just to understand this algae is a plant just like any other plant you have in your yard um, it requires three things to grow. Okay, number one, water. All right, number two, nutrients. Three, sun. Okay, so all your plants, whether it's a tree, a flower in your garden, you know, uh, your hibiscus tree, your your hydrangea bush, whatever it is, it needs water, it needs nutrients, and it needs sunlight. Okay. So obviously in a pond we have water, all right? Um, if we've got a bunch of fish and stuff in the pond, we've got nutrients and we always have the sun, God willing, okay? So um, those three things are gonna encourage that algae to grow, all right? So what helps to restrict that algae growth is some shade, okay? If we can take away the sun, one of those three things, all right, we can't take away the water, because then we won't have a pond. It's hard to take away the nutrients because that's basically, um, you know, <laughs> self made in the pond. However, the more plants you have, the more those plants absorb those nutrients and help to starve out the algae. Now the little trick here is plants, you know, higher up, so to speak, in the food chain, so to say, okay, um, be it uh, irises, uh, hibiscus, um, taros, right? I mean, lilies, lotuses are gonna absorb more nutrients than the little you know microscopic celled algae okay so if we can produce more plants in the pond to absorb all those nutrients and basically starve the algae out okay that helps to eliminate those nutrients now the other thing is if our plants grow nice and full and lush around our pond, things that provide coverage on the surface, such as water lilies, water hyacinths, water lettuce, um, anything, you know, parrot's feather, uh, these different plants that spread along the surface of the pond, that will provide shade and stop the sunlight from penetrating down into the water. So that too helps to restrict algae growth, okay? Now, having your pond out in the sun, um, you know, primarily the, the, the biggest thing is the algae, okay? Um, but here's the little trick now. If we want a big koi pond, all right, big, large koi fish, 
those koi can become very destructive to aquatic plants. Sometimes aquatic plants um, <laughs> don't exist very well at all <laughs> with koi, simply because the koi are going to rip them apart, um, eat them, um, you know, and, and just get quite destructive as they get bigger. Goldfish, shabunkin, things like that is not really as much of a problem, but koi that, you know, going to grow two foot long or more um, can really do some damage to your plants. Now, I just want to say that <laughs> it seems to be more common, at least from my experience, that koi will damage and destroy plants um, than not. All right. Now, I do have a couple clients that have some like tropical water lilies in their ponds with the koi, and the koi don't really touch them. But I have a lot of other clients that put some lilies and water hyacinths and stuff in their pond and the koi just immediately destroy them. Um, you know, and sometimes my, my clients will say, oh, my lilies, you know, growing fine with the koi. And I'm like, no, you've got four half chewed up leaves and one flower. You know, you should have 30 leaves and five flowers, okay? So, yeah. <laughs> definitely something to think about. Usually a koi pond is a koi pond, a pond for koi. And most people who are real koi enthusiasts don't want plants because they just dirty up the water. At least that's kind of like the, you know, <laughs> the concept behind it. But a water garden, okay, is more about a pond um, for plants that has some fish in it. Okay, so two different concepts here. But anyway, back to the sunlight, okay? So having that pond in sun, um, full sun all day, um, definitely we're gonna heat up the water. It's gonna be a little harder on the fish as well. Not only does the water get warmer, um, which is not terrible. The fish can adapt to a wide range of water temperatures. Um, and having a deeper pond, the deeper your pond, the better. Reason being the ground is cooler and the ground kind of insulates the pond in the winter, but it also generates some coolness, okay, um, in that dirt, in the soil around the bottom of the pond that's cooler than the surface of the pond in the hot air above. So it helps to kind of regulate the temperature of the pond a bit. Now, <laughs> there's ways to cool the water. Um, I'm gonna get into that a little bit later, but um, for right now, just know, obviously we're, we're creating a, a warmer environment in the sun. Now, the warm water doesn't necessarily kill the fish or hurt the fish. Um, what is really bad um, for them that I've learned is the actual UV radiation. Okay, UV radiation, um, which gives us sunburns, okay, basically um, will go down through the water and it heats up the body temperature of the fish. So while it's not actually going to give the fish like a sunburn, the UV increases the body temperature of the fish. Now, if this body temperature gets too high, that's not good. All right, so sometimes being able to provide some short sort of shade to um, let the fish go into that shade to get away from that UV radiation will help reduce their body temperatures a bit. So any kind of structure, even in the pond, maybe putting, you know, I've seen people put in these, um, you know, like rocks, the big flat rocks where the fish can go underneath. Um, I've seen uh, large corrugated sections of pipe cut and put in a pond and the fish can swim into it. I have seen, um, I mean, they have these things called koi castles, which are these little nylon mesh uh, cover things that they can swim into and hide. Um, things like that. Um, maybe if you have a little deck over your pond, but something like, um, I mean, man-made structures are the best. Whether you have to put up an umbrella, a sail shade, during extreme temperatures. Um, if you have a gazebo or a pergola near the pond that they can get natural shade from, maybe a bridge that goes over the pond that they can go under, um, anything like that definitely um, can help. 
All right. Now, that being said, um, I would say a large majority of my clients have their ponds out in the sun, and we really don't have major issues with them. All my ponds are at least, you know, three feet deep or more. So they have, you know, it's they've been good. I haven't had an issue, but I want to share this information with you just so you know, right? If you build a pond that's a foot, foot and a half deep and you have big koi in there for the summer and it's out in direct sun, you, there may be a, you might have a problem there, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, the flip side is <laughs> the shade. All right. Here's um, some things about the shade. Obviously now, as I've said here with ponds in the sun, shade can be very beneficial. All right. However, having the pond too far under trees can be a real mess. All right. I do have a bunch of clients that have, you know, a wooded um, property and their ponds are very close to some large trees, dropping acorns all the time, dropping leaves, dropping sticks. Um, in a storm, there's a possibility of big branches coming down, falling into the pond, puncturing the liner. I've seen that too. Um, I've had lightning strike a tree next to a guy's pond. One of the most amazing things I've ever seen, I'm actually going to put this video up here, or not video, just a picture up here of the tree. So this is a large oak tree, and if you can see the bark is all blown off this tree in like lines coming down from the top of the tree down to the ground. The most amazing thing after this, after that, that tree was hit by lightning, the homeowner had called me because the power on the pond went out. Um, basically, the, um, the pumps and the filter system was not too far from that, <laughs> and the um, reset buttons on the GFIs on the outlets tripped. Um, luckily, there was no other damage. I literally just went over there, pushed the reset button, and away we went. But the most amazing thing about this whole thing was his entire backyard was covered in shredded strips of wood and bark. So all that lightning shot right down the tree and blew all the bark off the tree and it's all shredded and just long skinny pieces all over the place. It was really, really amazing. But anyway, um, that's a rare occurrence, but obviously it can happen. Um, but more so, you know, a trees like willows, all right? beautiful trees, look great, beautiful golden willow, all hangs down over the pond, looks natural, looks, oh my gosh, one of the messiest trees you're ever going to see. They drop these whips all over the place, okay? Acorns, right, from oak trees, the little tassels that fall down from oak trees. Maple trees have those little propeller things that seed things that fall down all over the place, okay? This stuff gets in your pond, it's a mess. Um, I've even gotten to the point where sometimes people, if they have a wooded area and they want a pond, um, their idea is, oh, I think we should put in a skimmer because I get a lot of debris down here in the pond. And sometimes I really hesitate and tell them that may not be such a good idea. And the reason being is the skimmers are so efficient, okay? They work so well. They pull so much water off of that surface that if you constantly have a lot of debris falling in the pond, that skimmer is going to be clogged all the time, okay? And it becomes more of a nuisance than it's actually worth. It sometimes would be more beneficial for you to just to have a nice little pool skimmer net or something out there by your pond and each day when you go out to feed the fish just grab it and scoop off a couple leaves and throw them away rather than coming home from work going out to your pond finding your skimmer is totally clogged with garbage now the problem with that is yeah it's easy to clean but the problem with that is, is if it gets too clogged up the water is not going to get through the skimmer to the pump sometimes we have some pumps in the skimmer um, and if the water doesn't get through to that pump that pump can be running dry and suck in air and it can burn out a lot faster and you're going to go through a lot of pumps um, I tend to not put pumps in the skimmer anymore if I don't have to. I would rather put a 4-inch bulkhead fitting in the bottom of that skimmer 
and run a four inch uh, PVC pipe out and gravity feed it into a, a separate filter tank. So all my debris just comes right in the skimmer, right out the pipe and into the tank. Um, that basically um, prolongs <laughs> the amount of time in which you know all that debris is gonna clog up anything. So it all goes into a separate a filter tank. Um, I have videos on all the skimmer stuff and gravity feeding things as well if you're interested in that, but it's just another idea. Um, but also now being in the shade, most of your water plants, a large majority of your water plants will not grow as well in the shade. A lot of them will grow, okay? They may grow a little thinner, okay? Not be as full and as lush and they may flower a lot less. Now water lilies, just for instance, most water lilies are gonna need at least four to five hours of direct sunlight to um, produce flowers. Um, obviously, the more sunlight, the better, okay? But a minimum of four to five hours a day of sunlight for your water lilies to really produce some nice flowers. Um, so there are some plants that do prefer some shaded areas, um, definitely, but for the most part, the more sun, the better. So for that reason, if you have a pond in a very shaded area, there's not as many plants that you're going to want to put in the pond. I would concentrate more on planting outside the pond because there's more of a variety of perennials and shrubs and bushes and stuff that can grow in, in shade to partial shade um, than the plants are for the pond that will do well in shade, okay? So just, just an idea there. But basically, like I said, um, you know, the main thing having the pond out in the sun is going to create a lot of algae. It's going to heat up the water. We should try to provide something to block some of that UV from the fish. Um, you know, if possible, if not, keep the ponds deep enough, they'll stay cooler. Um, in the shade, we have a lot of debris, all right? So we want to try to find that happy medium, <laughs> okay? That happy medium, if possible. Obviously, the best thing to do, like I said, would be to uh, provide a permanent structure like a pergola or a deck or a bridge over part of the pond to help cover it, but yet, you know, still have that pond out in the sun, all right? So that's basically, just quickly, some ideas, some thoughts about, you know, sunny area, shady area. What are some advantages and disadvantages of each? All right, obviously the shade is a really nice, relaxing environment. It's cooler to go out and sit in a, you know, a little bench, a little chair in the, in the summer, in the shade, and enjoy your pond. Absolutely, I totally get it. Just keep in mind, it's a big mess in the pond, okay? A lot of maintenance and cleanup with that. Um, and if your pond is in, you know, under those trees, please make sure in the fall you're covering it with netting before the leaves come down, okay, to keep that pond clean. Because it's, it can really, those leaves in the fall will really accumulate fast in that pond and become a real big mess. And we don't want all those leaves sitting in the pond all winter rotting and decaying. All right, so keep your ponds nice and clean. All right, so I think that's about it, um, you know, for this subject. Again, just give you some thoughts and ideas to think about here. And um, thank you for watching. You know, hit the like button if it helped you out a little bit. Subscribe to the channel. You know, please take some time, look around. I have a ton of videos here. Um, a lot of things on, you know, we're talking about uh, the ponds, sun or shade, and the maintenance and what needs to be done to them. So I have a lot of other videos too on seasonal care for your pond, spring, summer, winter, fall. All, you know what needs to be done with your pond um, things with um, sh I mean <laughs> all kinds of maintenance issues fixing leaks um, power outages what to do if there's a power outage you know netting for the ponds in the winter I have videos on all that stuff too it talks about different types of netting um, you know tons of stuff here for you so please take some time take a look around um, look at the videos I really appreciate the support thank you very much for watching and hopefully we'll see you back again soon in another video so take care have a great day now bye